Are you constantly putting off tasks until the very last minute? It turns out that almost everyone struggles with procrastination at some point in their lives. But have you ever stopped and wondered why do we do it in the first place? This is why there are three theories developed by neuroscience so far trying to explain this phenomenon. First, there's something called impulse control. According to some researchers, procrastination may be related to a person's ability to control their impulses and direct their emotions. In other words, procrastination can be just a fancy way of saying the following. I can't resist the temptation of watching another episode of my favorite show. Another possible explanation is the role of the brain as an executive function. This is the mental process that happens inside of our brains that help us plan, organize, and make a decision. So if you're a chronic procrastinator, probably the problem is in this executive function of your brain. There's a problem somewhere along this chain of thoughts, of planning, organizing, and making a decision. And I think somehow this is the life of being an adult. And third, we have to look at the role of the brain chemistry. There are many molecules in our brain and hormones that decide how we plan and act accordingly. But here we want to focus on two neurotransmitters, which are the serotonin and the dopamine. Low levels of dopamine may make it difficult for someone to accomplish a task if he feels unmotivated, while an imbalance in serotonin may lead to problems with mood regulation. So in fact, you need both of them, but in a balanced way. And any dysregulation to this balance may lead to difficulty starting and achieving a task. This is why sometimes we feel that our brain is really resisting an activity. It's like telling us that I don't want to do it. In other words, all of these three theories will create six main problems, which are fear of failure, lack of motivation, difficulty getting started, Perfectionism, because some people may be perfectionist and may procrastinate because they feel that they cannot complete a task to their own high standards. Time management issues and distractions, or to be prone to easy distractions. So now since we know the science behind this procrastination, it might be easier for us to tackle this problem. And again, neuroscience comes to our rescue. Researchers have developed many ways how we can beat procrastination. Here are six ways how you can possibly do it. One is to get clear on your goals. Because setting clear and specific attainable goals will put you on track and will give you some sense of a direction. And this can especially be helpful if you are the type of the executive procrastinator, as it can help you prioritize tasks and make a decision. The second tip is to break your activity into smaller chunks. Sometimes when I have a big project, I feel that I just don't want to start to work on it. Instead of rushing and start to work on it to finish it as soon as possible, I feel that I'm overwhelmed and I'm procrastinating again. So researchers have found that if we break down into small tasks, it will be much easier to tackle this project and work on it step by step. The third tip is a funny one and a bit counterintuitive, is to use positive self-talk. Negative self-talk is a major roadblock to productivity. Try replacing these thoughts with some positivity. Such thoughts like, I can do it, I am able to complete this task, and they are for free, why not? The fourth tip is to find accountability partner. Find a friend, a colleague, or a family member. They can hold you accountable for your goals, and more importantly, they can encourage you when you need it. Because sometimes we tend to procrastinate when we are alone, but when we have someone with us, we don't do it as much. Number five, which is the most important in my opinion, is to get rid of distractions. It's so hard to get things done when you are constantly being bombarded by notifications and social media. Try to eliminate as much as possible distractions. This will serve you a lot. And finally, number six, don't forget to reward yourself. Giving yourself more rewards every now and then can be a great way to put you on track and feel more motivated. But just make sure that you are choosing rewards that are actually rewarding rather than things that will distract you furthermore. So here you have it, neuroscience had three theories why procrastination might be happening and six tips how we can beat it. Now it's up to you, ex-procrastinator. It's time to put yourself on track and start working.